Okay, we've arrived at the capital. Apparently, there's things going on. Jerona, a blonde man dressed in furs, and a brocade. Okay, bows ceremoniously. Your Grace, I'm happy to greet you on behalf of Her Excellency, Duchess Corvash. I'm honored to represent Arena Corvash, the head of the Noble House of Horwood. My mistress rose to power after her poor mother died, and her ungrateful sister fell from grace. May her name be blotted from the history of the house. The ambassador retrieves a scroll from the folds of his luxurious attire and opens it and clears his throat. As arranged, my mistress grants you a trade contract, Your Grace. Very well. According to the terms, you should deliver a monthly load of vegetables and grain to Irisin in a timely fashion. Failing this, you'll be penalized. Your merchants shall pay all fees associated with Horwood trading rights, otherwise a prison sentence is due. The cargo shall be paid for within an 18-month time frame. Continue listening. He finishes reading the scroll and rolls it up and turns to you. Well, Your Grace, do you agree to commence commercial relations with the Noble House of Her Excellency? No. The ambassador grins, rolls the scroll, and makes a bow. As you wish, Your Grace, your rejection will hardly affect my mistress. Screw her. She wants us to pay for everything. Lindsay shifts from foot to foot. Jamal, or Jade Mall, sorry. Not all diplomatic problems are solved openly. Sometimes a problem needs to be concealed, and sometimes knowledge must be ciphered, and secrets overheard. To do this, you need a spy chief, and I'm not fit for the job. I'm used to speaking in my mind, not keeping silent. Please find a worthy minister for this position, and meanwhile, I will try to handle today's delicate matter. There's a guard detail from Seven Arches at the border. They were sent by the Voice of the Wind, one of the Elder Druids who rules Seven Arches, a diplomat and chief scout. The guard keeps insisting there's an elf hiding in our lands, a fugitive who slipped out of their city. They asked us to help capture him, or at least not to hinder their search, but in Seven Arches, they'll say the elf was a criminal when really they mean he is a hindrance. Since it wasn't us who sentenced him, why would we assume that he's a villain? It would be better to find him and help him get back home to Kionin. Tell me about the conflict. Seven arches are built on the spot that is sacred to elves. The elves fled from there once, and druids, the oak stewards, have ruled there ever since. The elves of Kionin would like to return to their shrine, or at least be granted access to it, but the druids are wary of Kionin and feel hostile to any elves on their territory. Let the elf through our lands. Helping him get home is a nice thing to do. I'll make sure we find the elf and get him back home safely. I'm sure Kionin will appreciate the friendly act. They might even send a letter of gratitude along with some ancient magical books. Oh, I just stopped daydreaming. He's in our land. He's under our protection. I'm not letting some random elves come in. Alright, now we have espionage to deal with as well. I'm sure there's going to be things that are happening in our capital. But I'm going to do my ruling stuff and I'll be right back. Okay, we are done our ruling stuff. Uh, we just assigned Ekendeo to be our spy master. He's probably the best for it. He's got plus six due to his dexterity. That works out pretty well. Um, there's really nothing else going on, to be fair. Just those minor events that we took care of. And Lindsay, I think, wants to talk to us still. Again. Imagine that, King. You know I always believed in you. You keep it up and who knows? In a couple of years, you might even become an emperor. But that Armag, he and those creepy sisters barely managed to find the tomb. How are we going to find it? I mean, I suppose I have a bit of an idea, but I'm not sure. I have scouts we can send to Glenabon Uplands. They can scour the location for us. Seriously? You have your own scouts? Well, I don't know why I'm so surprised. You're soon to be king. Fine then, let them search. What's the idea of yours? Remember that forsaken dwarven fortress where the sisters hold up? There's a huge library there, hundreds of ancient books. Maybe thousands. I bet there's something about Armag's tomb there somewhere. But who's going to read it all? You need to hire a whole army of scholars. That's the Tiger Lords. Sorry, but that's a dead end. I already chatted them up a bit. And they know about the same as we do. The tomb is somewhere in Glendabon Uplands, and Glendabon is, well, you know, big. Like, really big. I suppose we're out of other options. Let's do it then, let's find the tomb, we have to hurry. Who knows what Armag might do given enough time there. We have to reach Armag's tomb, that's literally our only job. Let's check the story tower and see if he has any stories or artifacts to make. Anything worthy of a story? Nope. Um... Any artifacts? Nope. We need to find more pieces of artifacts. We do it my way. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly go sell things and then we will head out 
into the Glenabon region one more time. Back in a couple minutes. Alright, welcome back. We are back to the lands that we're supposed to be exploring. We're gonna go to the Raspberry Gully and see what's there. Hopefully some raspberries and not death. Fingers crossed about the not death. We'll see. No guarantees. I'm not seeing a whole lot of raspberries for a place called Raspberry Gully. Yet. Their life ends here. Oh, there's druids. Oh, that's bad. There's a tree called Quickwood. Taste. Oh, this has gotten much worse. This has gotten so much worse. One tree is dead? Yes. They have a really long reach. There we go. Fighters, you're on your own. Actually, it wasn't all that hard. Okay. Some loot. Some loot. Bunch of loot. As you search, you notice an envelope inside the bush. It is hanging from the branch by a fine chain that runs through the envelope's black, black wax seal. The seal is in the shape of a skull, and the chain runs through its eye sockets. Any enchantments? An ominous seal on the envelope bears the traces of magical influence. How's the seal work? The seal itself is enchanted and will react on any attempts to either dispel the enchantment or break the seal. If the envelope is touched by anyone other than the designated recipient, it will crumble to dust. However, if you remove the seal without touching the envelope, do it. After some time, and with the help of simple tools, you manage to remove the seal. The envelope darkens, and its lower half disintegrates with a low rustling sound, but you manage to preserve three quarters of the letter. Good enough, I guess. What are the three quarters? My darling, I'm writing this while taking a rest stop in the Glenabon Wilderness. Don't be surprised, but I finally managed or decided to get up attacks. I'll miss the magical potion dear Karn Varel sells, but that's fine. I brought a supply of it with me. It'll come in handy when we celebrate our reunion. As for my homeland, things are getting worse and worse there. Everybody's appetites grow, the guards are fighting with the Thieves Guild, the old trade houses are keep making new schemes, and even the Academy of Arts has been said to have some new free thinkers appearing from time to time. I'm sure that pot will boil over sooner or later, and I'd prefer not to be there when it does. I also look forward to seeing you in the meantime. The letter cuts out there. Well, at least we got some of a weird letter. Oops. Did not mean to what My Windows lock button doesn't work on my lot or my keyboard for some reason. I don't know why. Did that work? Nope. I had some hope that I could block this thing, but I guess not. Maybe there's a different Windows lock key that I'm missing somewhere. If I were a Windows lock key, where would I be? It's that one. Nope, that's still... Definitely a Windows button works. Alright, well... I don't know. Let's continue to search around for more things. This place is giant. And I'm sure we have more things to find. At least we can move quickly here because it's grassland. There's more resources for us to claim eventually whenever we claim this land. We'll rest shortly, don't worry. The rest would be welcome. Just filling in blanks. Sure. A 
a random encounter. Our road once again led us to the border of Patex, where bandits unconcerned for the law often lie in wait for innocent victims. Imagine how surprised we were when we, instead of bandits, we bumped into a guard patrol. Could it be that King Iravedi was determined to restore order along his border? I've seen all sorts of miracles, but this would be hard to believe. The guard kindly informed us that the borders were closed due to a travel ban. This was not because of a war or plague, but because of the celebration. The kingdom was preparing for the Rushlight Tournament, and the king was busy giving personal consultations to painters, artists, and even masters of the stage who would be responsible for the event. The Baron and I exchanged smiles. Too bad for the poor artists. According to the guard, the king ordered the borders closed to keep the secret details of his coming triumph. The guardsmen were polite but adamant. Fortunately, we had no reason to challenge him and fight our way into attacks. The Baron specifically asked what would happen if we violated the ban. Most probably, we'd have a fight and you'd win, then a diplomatic crisis would follow, and in any case, you'd be expelled from Patax. We discussed the situation and decided that there was no reason to derail our relations with Patax without good reason. Alright, we're gonna leave alone. Guess we're not going that way. That is a way we cannot go yet. Can I go there now? We'll fight random enemies, why not? Free experience, we gotta get one more level before we can buy our new characters. And every few hundred experience helps. Dodge! It's just one- oh, it's not just one dire wolf, it is several dire wolves. Uh, you, not you, you. Move there. Out of my way! It is many new dire wolves. There we go, no problem. They're not worth very much experience. Also, I do have the sword back. I forgot to put it back on. There we go. I won't be halted. She actually looks kind of cool with a. Uh... Reminds me of a uh, barbarian from Diablo 2, actually. With two two-handed weapons. Also, I heard about the new mobile Diablo game. There is quite the uproar about that. I get it. I get the uproar. Nobody wants a Diablo mobile game. Um. Okay, let's go this way. But you don't need to get mad at Blizzard for making a mobile game, you just don't buy it. Like, there's not... No one's forcing you to buy anything. If you don't want to buy something, just don't buy it. Let people make whatever they want. Yeah, it's not Diablo 4. They are working on Diablo 4. But, just seriously, no one's forcing you to buy a single thing. Except for, like, bread. And food. You're kind of forced to buy food, because otherwise you might die. And sometimes water, depending where you live. But no one's forcing you to buy a mobile game or not, just we ignore it. My way. Here's how you beat Blizzard's... ...desire to make a mobile game. You don't buy it. When then doesn't sell very well, and they don't make any money off of it. Then you won, they won't make another one. Problem solved. Onwards. Apparently there's a portal into the Fae. I never heard of... The only game I've ever been outraged by, not really outraged, but annoyed by, is Star Citizen. And that's not because I dislike the game or think it's going to be bad. I just think it's never going to come out in a proper form. It's been... The feature creep is real in that game. That game could be taught in a course on... Not making feature creep a big part of your game. That game started off as like a... Elite Dangerous meets... Uh, EVE Online. And now it's turned into like... A first-person shooter, fighter simulator, carrier group simulator thing. Oh, we just got poisoned. Hang on. I didn't realize there's gonna be poison in here. Let's just quickly grab communal protection from poison. Ignore poison all around because poison's stupid, and I don't want to deal with it. Also, I like the music that's playing right now. It's kind of cool. But yeah, that's really all you gotta do. Don't buy it. 
if they make less money than they put into it, they will not make another one. They will have learned their lesson. Let us not hesitate. Alright, back into here. So now we have protection from poison. How long is this gonna last for? An hour. Plus forever. Do it. This will hurt. Power of my way. I think it's all to attack spear to be poison. 1900 experience though. Actually kind of impressive. What's the Alkai gloves? Whenever the wearer of these gloves successfully lands a hit with a melee weapon, an unarmed strike, or a natural weapon, the target takes 1d6 points of acid damage. I am never wrong. And our monk doesn't have any gloves, so those are perfect for her. She'll be dealing some acid damage now too. Would have been helpful against trolls back in the day, but... Better late than never, I guess. Okay, there's very clearly a really cool thing over here, and I don't know how to get to it. I don't know if you can. I'm guessing you cannot. Okay. Is that it? Everything else is done here? Okay. Quick little area in the first world. And now we're off again. Got some decent monk gloves. She's gonna be doing some serious damage now though. I should also turn off that damage reduction or damage piercing ability. It stops her from using um I think it stops her from using um what's it called? Gloria blows, so her attacks are way slower. I stand ready. It's a f oh wait. Real punch. You know what? Fine, we'll leave it on. I don't know if it does anything. We'll find out. We're on a strike. Brings her down to plus 23 to hit, but deals way more damage. Alright. I am never wrong. Other abilities aren't we using. Rapid shot. That's because her attack bonus is actually fairly low right now, so not too worried about that. Plus 25 to hit. We should turn power attack back on. That only brings her down four and upgrades her damage by quite a lot. Same with him. Plus 22 to hit. Can you stack Vital Strike? Oh no. Vital Strike and Improved Vital Strike are mutually exclusive. Okay. I won't be halted. If we run into problems hitting things, we will just turn back off. Um, hang on. Power attack. Is there a way out up here? Probably not, eh? Nope. Okay, off to the next area then. Alkali Gloves. Interesting. How close are we to a level now? About 21... No. 25,000 or so. A little over 25,000. 26,000, something like that. But soon we'll be up a level, we'll grab two new characters. So we're going to be replacing our mage and our rogue. We're going to make an arcane trickster, which is basically a mage and a rogue. It's going to be heavy buff oriented. And then we're going to make, I think, an actual tank tank. Valdori defender, stalwart defender. You know, all those defender subclasses. That's just a mine. We're gonna have to rest pretty quick here. Like right now. At about the first of the month, we'll head back as well. Just check out our kingdom, see if anything's going awry. Running into a whole lot of things up here. There's a mysterious shrine number two. 
We'll handle that soon. We, I think we need to find all of them. So there's five in total, I believe I saw. So these lead to Patax. Maybe not this one over here. We definitely can't go down further than we currently are. So... Where else haven't we gone? I mean, I guess possibly down over here. <laughs> Adventures can wait. I'll fight. Be more dire wolves. <gasps> Their life ends here. Goblins, seriously. Okay, I get that they screwed up the random encounter scaling in the beginning of the game when it first came out, but goblins? That was like a CR2 fight. Maybe a bit higher. Maybe like a CR4 fight. We are so far beyond that. No good loot. Not that we were expecting any good loots from goblins, basically. random enemies. Oh, which probably should have rested. I think we're all fatigued. Or most of us are fatigued. We'll rest soon. Charge! Leopards, this time. This will hurt. Not exactly an intimidating fight. This sword's very cool. Endless War, I like that. Having a Barbarian using that is really good because she can basically ignore the... Um, like the Thorns damage she takes. So damage reduction is six or nine or something now. Eight? I don't know what it is. She has some damage reduction, but she can basically ignore most of that damage unless it rolls like max damage. Uh, down. Nope, that's back into attacks again. I'm guessing that is as well. But we might as well check it out since we're here. There's another mysterious shrine down in Patax. I'm guessing we're going into Patax later. That's just a straight up copper mine. I think I'm out of places to go. I guess down by Pike Stretch, we haven't gone there. Unless there's something in the middle here, which I doubt. In the gulch, we haven't gone there, but... Did we go into the Serpent Trail? Yeah. <laughs> Adventures can wait. And that's that. Okay, I guess we do have to do the Shrewish Gulch. Really our only other place to go. I wish we would go deal with Kingdom stuff too. How odd. We've searched everywhere else. These are all Pataxian trails. We can't go to any of those places. 
doesn't look like there's anything up there. Alright, we'll go do some ruling things and we'll come back. I will end it off here. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time. Take care.